We're going to speak on a word today that is really, really popular. It's called prosperity. And perhaps you've wondered why, as a Christian, you don't prosper like you see so many other people prospering. There is a kingdom prosperity that has not been taught to the Christians in the mass media. The popular version of prosperity is in the faith message, which is correct, but it deals with the soulish prosperity. The prosperity Jesus spoke about was kingdom prosperity. Now you recall in Matthew 6.33, Jesus says, Seek first, first, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is different from the kingdom of this world. Prosperity in this world is not the prosperity that's going to give you happiness and eventual eternal treasures in heaven. Jesus was always speaking about spiritual treasures. You see, spiritual treasures are eternal. Soulish treasures are not eternal. They pass away with everything in this earth. The kingdom prosperity of this world is temporary. The kingdom prosperity of this world is designed to keep you imprisoned with the things of this earth. The prosperity Jesus spoke about is the prosperity of eternal treasures that go on long after your body leaves this planet. This is what makes the prosperity of the kingdom the most important message you can understand. Because prosperity is a promise of the kingdom of God. It is absolutely ours if we belong to Christ. But we have to begin as servants. And you see, that's a message that somehow has been overlooked when we study the scriptures. There is a definition of a disciple that I want you to take and read for yourself. It is in Luke, the 14th chapter. In Luke, the 14th chapter, in verse 26, read it for yourself. These are Jesus' words. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, mother, wife, children, brothers, and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. If you don't hate your life, your mother, your brother, your lands, and even everything about this world, you cannot be his disciple. Look at verse 33. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. So, in Jesus' own words, if everything about your life is detestable to you, now I don't say that you hate your parents. I don't say that you hate your brothers and sisters. Jesus uses those words. But he's trying to make a point. He's trying to explain to us there's nothing in this earth that is going to give you the understanding of the kingdom of God if you put your emotions, your attachment, and everything that you have into the things of this earth and you keep your eyes focused there through your love, through your attachments, through your affection. If you, if you have that connection, he can't separate you into the understanding of the kingdom of God. You see, we are of this world, but we are not from this world. We belong in this environment because we were born into this body. But the kingdom understanding separates us from the attachments of this earth to the understanding of the kingdom of God. It's only when you separate yourself as a disciple can you begin to understand the concepts 
the precepts and the kingdom understanding that Jesus is trying to develop. That is where a disciple begins. We all have to begin there. That's the reason in the kingdom of God, we all start as servants. You have to be a servant in order to move to the level of stewardship. Now, a steward is someone who has the responsibility of moving the goods of the kingdom into this earth. You see, it requires possessions, it requires riches, it requires money, it requires material things to advance the kingdom of God. But those material things are not the end result. And if you're attached to the material things, you cannot see the eternal treasures which are not bound by the restrictions of this world. So Jesus says, be my disciple first so that you can become into the position so that I can start to train you for stewardship. Because it's the stewardship, it's the steward that understands how to develop the things that are eternal. You can't develop the things that are eternal if you're bound by, by the affections and the attractions and the attachments of this earth. They keep you focused on the material instead of on the eternal. So, we all begin as servants. We all begin as a disciple. That's the place where Jesus can train us. That's the place that we all have to begin. So, Jesus says, now, once you have reached this place, once you have started as a servant, now I can start to train you about the things of the kingdom of God. In Matthew, the 25th chapter, beginning at verse 14, we find a very important scripture that Jesus is explaining to his disciples. He's explaining something about the kingdom of heaven. So read this. The kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. Now notice, this king has servants. He has disciples. When you're a disciple, he delivers his goods to you. Now watch. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. He didn't give them a bunch of instructions. He knew because they were his servants what they needed to do. He knew that they knew what to do because they were his servants. So immediately he left them after he gave them his goods. And he said, <clears throat> do business. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, 